If you've been frustrated by the progress of SpaceX's Starship, we get it. Spaceship has been delayed from its first orbital for more than a year. However, as SpaceX is rushing to make the final crucial test, the first Starship orbital flight is now actually closer than ever. You probably even heard about Elon Musk wanting to recklessly attempt the booster catch during the first orbital launch. You know, this is really too risky of a bet. But what about its partner's fate? Welcome back to Alpha Tech. We'd like to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. And now let's grab a seat, grab a drink, whatever you need, and we'll expose everything about why Elon Musk is still keeping the decision to land Starship S24 in the water. A recently updated document submitted by SpaceX to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, has revealed details about the company's plan for the first Starship's booster catch attempt. But there's no change with Starship, although Musk also intends to catch Starship in the future. The Starship Super Heavy test flight will originate from Starbase in Texas. Just under two minutes after liftoff at 171 seconds, the Super Heavy booster will separate from the ship. The booster stage will perform a partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico or return to Starbase to be caught by the launch tower. Meanwhile, the Starship orbital stage will ignite its Raptor engines at T plus 3 minutes 56 seconds and for the first time continue into orbit heading east over the Gulf of Mexico and following a track passing between South Florida and Cuba to never be above populated land while still ascending towards orbit. Cutoff of the Raptor engines is expected about 8 minutes and 41 seconds into the mission. Once orbital velocity is reached at roughly 28,000 kilometers per hour and a soft controlled ocean landing at 62 miles or 100 kilometers from the northernmost island of Hawaii, Kauai. Musk pointed out on Twitter, this is three quarters of the way around Earth, which is much, much farther than the 6.2 mile or 10 kilometer up and down suborbital hops observers of the program are accustomed to. And that deorbit over the Pacific Ocean is a necessary precaution to minimize risk of breakup on re-entry for this initial attempt. The flight will end at around 90 minutes after liftoff, around 5,420 seconds. Note that Starship will still splash down at the end of the mission. It will be out in the water with no platform to land on and nothing to catch it. So why? What secrets are there behind it? Well, one of the biggest reasons for landing in the ocean and not on land is human safety. If you're wondering, by the way, why the orbital Starship doesn't try to land at Starbase like before, it's because the orbital flight test landing won't be coming in from an almost straight up and down trajectory like the previous prototype test flights have. Its flight path is also much more complicated than booster. The Starship will be coming in sideways, and it'll have all of its orbital speed along with it when it re-enters the atmosphere. To play it the safest, it needs to re-enter the atmosphere somewhere over the ocean in case something goes wrong. If there is some sort of failure with this experimental spacecraft that relies on experimental systems like its brand new thermal protection system, then we might find ourselves in the same position. We've seen a disaster happen at the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003 where chunks rained down all across parts of the U.S., so no, we don't want any of that. And the location where they're going to try to put the orbital Starship prototype down after its flight is clearly well thought out. It's right in the middle of the Pacific where the re-entry portion of the flight would happen over the ocean with such a trajectory it would ensure any debris will end up in the ocean if something goes wrong, and the splashdown site is a safe distance away. But still, very close to the Hawaiian island of Kauai, and this will presumably allow SpaceX to recover the Starship and gain potentially priceless information from studying all those crispy remains all while keeping everyone safe and not having to deal with international hurdles because Hawaii is a part of the United States. In addition, this is a SpaceX test vehicle. SpaceX does these radical things that other companies don't really do called rapid prototyping. SpaceX does a radical thing called rapid prototyping that few other companies do, and at one time, a single product prototype costs more to produce than the final product. The value provided, even if it was only an approximation of the production design, it came from having a physical representation that could be handled, tested, and evaluated. However, if it was destroyed in the process of the design, it needed to be revised. The cost of time and money to create another one was generally prohibitive. 
Today, rapid prototyping, or RP, has made the fabrication of physical models cost-effective as well as fast, and consequently its use has become a practical step in product design. The ability to repeatedly produce and revise prototypes speeds up overall design timelines. As SpaceX engineers learn quickly and make adjustments, they can deliver a production-ready design with confidence, having gone through the necessary iterations. Elon Musk relies on those iterations and the concept of failing fast in order to succeed sooner. He uses this approach to develop a rocket that would compete on an orbital launch and land safely with the ultimate goal of building a reusable rocket. Shortly after the first SpaceX Starship prototype broke apart during a pressurization test in November of 2019, the company introduced the second. Musk named it SN1, serial number 1, with the expectation that others would follow. By building, testing, and flying vehicles as quickly as possible, SpaceX engineers learn what works and what doesn't, and then rapidly move on to the next version. At SpaceX, failure is merely part of the process, not a reason to give up. You know, now while Ship 24 is testing for the first orbital flight, Ship 25 is being stacked in high bay. Out in the ring yard, we have S-28 payload section, S-26 midlocks. Elsewhere, parts of S-27 and even S-29 have also been spotted. They're attempting to construct an inexpensive and mass-producible vehicle in the first place. So they'd rather lose the hardware in a failure than waste time figuring out all the failure modes, which is the long way around but one of the main reasons for landing in the first place. Anyway, the fact that Ship 24 landing in the water, it doesn't lessen the significance of the mission. SpaceX intends to collect as much data as possible during flight to quantify entry dynamics and better understand what the vehicle experiences in a flight regime that's extremely difficult to accurately predict or replicate computationally. SpaceX said, this data will anchor any changes in vehicle design or CONOPS, concept of operation, after the first flight and build better models for us to use in internal simulations. Until now, the company didn't identify a target date for Starship Program's first orbital test launch. But SpaceX Chief Executive Elon Musk has said the Starship's first shot into space could happen next month. In any case, Starship going orbital any time before the end of the year would be a critical milestone for SpaceX. A successful orbital test would represent the most major strides forward in the program to date. And that's all for today's video. Do you think that first Starship orbital flight will be successful? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, leave us with a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. See you next time.